Hello everyone. Myself, Sachit Rajadeksh. And uh, first of all, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, as it is, uh, we have covered the entire curriculum. Uh, we have uh, solved the objective questions on the topics also. Uh, you may get baffled and why I'm here today. The reason is I wanted to give you a more, ex uh, I mean, I wanted to give you a, a different experience of our video lecture and uh, I want to present the topic which I have already taught in the class. I want to present it in terms of a video lecture so that uh, you will get a different experience altogether. And uh, that is why this is just a small attempt on my part. And uh, at the end of, uh, uh, as and when you view this lecture video lecture this is this is my uh, this is just a sincere attempt on my part so if uh, uh, i would definitely like to have your uh, comments uh, on this particular topic on the way i have delivered this video lecture i would like to have your comments uh, uh, when you go through it so please so the topic that we are going to discuss now is what is projectile motion So, what is the projectile or what is the projectile motion to start with? First of all, you should know what is the uh, theory behind this and then we'll go into the different detailed aspects of it. So, projectile motion means any object which is thrown in air making an angle theta less than 90 degrees with the horizontal horizontal means ground can be termed as projectile and the motion is said to be a projectile motion. So repeat, please uh, pay attention. Any object thrown in air making an angle theta less than 90 degrees with the horizontal can be termed as a projectile and the motion is said to be projectile motion. So let me just explain this concept to you uh, by drawing a diagram. So let me just draw it here. This is point A, this is point B and this is ground or in the terminology of projectile I will call this as horizontal. Uh, I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, let me just explain to you. Uh, let me just uh, explain what the example is all about. The first example that I'm going to take here is motion of football. Motion of football in air. So let me just explain this in terms of a diagram. So here I have uh, these two points A and B. A is the starting point at which I am assuming that the motion is commencing and it is starting. So I assume that the football is placed over here at point A to start with and initially here when it is at point A it is at rest, it is resting on ground. As I have already explained projectile motion means the object, the motion of the object in air. The object has to be strictly in air for it to be called as a projectile. It has to be in air. I'm stressing that point. So presently this football is resting on the ground. So at this point, at this juncture, we cannot we cannot call it as a projectile motion. I hope it is clear to you. Let us proceed now. Now here the ball is resting at point A. Now the player comes and kicks the ball. Now as he kicks the ball, naturally this ball will go into air, it will go into air, right? 
Now the ball has left the ground and it has entered air. So clearly it is moving in air. Right? So this, this particular line, which you can see in the video, this line is the line of travel of that ball. Now there are certain parameters that you need to understand uh, which are related to this projectile. So the first parameter is angle of projection. It is denoted by letter theta. Now let me just define what is this angle of projection. So now the ball has been kicked by this player and the ball has gone into air. As I have already explained, this is the line of travel. This is the path along which the ball is traveling now. Now the angle made by this, yeah, the angle made by the line of travel of the object with the horizontal. That is what you call as angle of projection. See, I'm just uh, repeating once more. The angle made by the line of travel of the object with the horizontal. Now, let me explain this to you. Now, this is the line along which the object is traveling. The ball is traveling in air. Now, the angle that is made, subtended by this line of travel with the horizontal. This is the horizontal, as you can see. The line which is joining these points A and B. This is what I'll call as a horizontal or it is ground, basically. So the angle that is made, this is, see, this is the path along which the object is moving, the ball is moving. Now the angle made by this line of travel with this horizontal, this is what you call as angle of projection and that is indicated by letter theta. See, in other words, you may call it as the angle at which that object is projected in air. The angle at which it is projected in air that is what you may call as angle of projection. So this is all about what is angle of projection. In short, it is the angle made by the line of travel. Line of travel means, I repeat, it is the path along which that object is moving in air. The angle made by that line of travel with the horizontal, that is what you call as basically angle of projection. Yeah. Now, the second parameter that is of uh, our interest here is uh, yeah that is range range of projectile see we are going to uh, encounter two particular parameters one is range and another is height so whenever in this particular explanation whenever i use the word range it means it is the horizontal distance and whenever i use the word I use the terminology height, it means it is the vertical distance. So uh, both are distances, range is horizontal and height is vertical. All right. So uh, let me come back to this diagram again. Now the football has been kicked by this player. The ball has gone into air. So naturally it will go into a curve. The motion will be curved like this. It will reach a certain point, if I may call this as O. And from O, it will dip, it will dip like this and will come to point P. Let me explain this again. The football is initially at point O, it is kicked by the player. Now, now it has gone into the air. Now the angle made by this line of travel with the horizontal is what is angle of projection. The angle at which the ball is projected into air that is angle of projection as I have already explained to you and then the ball moves like this it reaches a particular point and then it comes down like this so you have uh, if I may call it as opposite kinds of motion on either side of point O if I may divide it into two parts say from o, A to O you have one kind of uh, uh, motion and on, from O to B it's the opposite kind. Uh, uh, I'm using the word opposite in the sense that from A to O here the ball is going up up and up it re reaches a particular point O 
and from point O onwards it is dipping. So from the point of projection A to O this is the upward motion of the ball and from O to B it is a downward motion of the ball. The ball is dipping that is why we will say that it is a downward motion of the ball. So I may if I may I may, I may say it this way that uh, I, I, may, I may just put it this way on either side of O on left and right side of O you have uh, opposite uh, uh, motions you can you may say that way if, if I, yeah so what is the range to start with now the ball has been kicked from here it goes like this reaches this point as I've already explained and from O onwards it dips and hits this point B so when it hits the ground it, it hits the ground at point B now the range is the maximum horizontal distance maximum horizontal distance covered maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile I repeat it is the maximum horizontal distance covered by the projectile in projectile motion of course in projectile motion so in this diagram how will you calculate range you see the motion of the ball started at point A from A it moved like this it reached this particular point O that is the maximum uh, that is the uh, maximum elevation that is attained by the ball and from O it dips down and reaches, hits this ground at point B so I can clearly say that this distance, uh, I hope you agree with me that this distance AB is the horizontal distance. So the motion has started at A and it has ended at B. So this AB is the maximum horizontal distance that is covered by the ball in this particular example. I hope you are understanding what I am saying. So the maximum horizontal distance is this AB. As you can see AB is a horizontal distance. So the maximum distance that is this is the starting point, this is the end point, this is where the motion is ending. So the maximum distance between A and B and to add to that it is horizontal distance. So maximum horizontal distance towards that is what you call as inch and it is denoted by letter R. See, uh, uh, in terms of an example if I may, uh, if I may give you. Uh, Say, yeah, you can. Uh, in terms of for uh, defense systems, yeah, uh, in the examples of for uh, examples of defense systems, uh, we often come across. terms like range of missile range of missile is 300 kilometers 500 kilometers and so on so what do you mean by this basically the maximum range the range is 300 kilometers or 500 kilometers it is the maximum uh, horizontal distance that that missile can travel. Uh, you might have heard that uh, India has uh, manufactured a missile ranging 500 kilometers, 1000 kilometers. What do you mean by that? It has the capacity to, if, if I may say that it, 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 the, the range is 500 kilometers, what it means is uh, it can hit the enemy target which is 500 kilometers from the point of projection. Say, if I may draw it like this, suppose this is the point A and it is the launching point. Here you have the missile. Here you have the missile. Okay. And it is launched from here. It moved like this. If I if I am talking about a missile of 500 kilometer range, what it means is from here anything which is coming in this distance of 500 kilometers 
it can be hit by this particular missile. That is what it means. I repeat, you have a missile which is launched from point A. It moves into, suppose if I'm talking about a missile of say 500 kilometers. What it means is anything in the range of anything within 500 kilometers from the launching point can be hit by this particular missile. Anything in this distance, within this distance of 500 kilometers can be hit. And, and that means, particularly now you say, we, as you know, we use the missiles to hit the enemy targets. Isn't it? So anything that comes within this 500 kilometers, it can be hit quite accurately by these missiles. So this 500 kilometers is the maximum horizontal distance that can be covered by this missile. And that is what you call as a range. I hope you understand. I hope uh, you got this concept of what is range. So it is the maximum horizontal distance that is covered. Anything in this particular example, range is 500 kilometers, anything less than 500 kilometers, anything which is in the distance of less than 500 kilometers, it will always be hit by the missile. But the maximum target that it can hit is at 500 kilometers. So that is what you call as a range. So it is the maximum horizontal distance that is covered. It is the ultimate, the maximum horizontal distance that can be covered by the object. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, what is height? Height of projectile. Now, height of projectile, let me just come back to the first diagram that I have drawn. Yeah. Now, this is my starting point or this is my, uh, if I may come back to this example of football. Now, this ball is here at point A. It has, uh, it has been kicked so that it has gone into the air. It reached this point O and from O onwards, it comes down and hits this point B, right? Now, as I already uh, uh, explained in my uh, previous discussion, that range and height are uh, both distances, the only thing is that range is the maximum horizontal distance covered and height is the maximum vertical distance covered. Instead of horizontal, you have only vertical distance to power, to, uh, to power no? that is what you call as height basically. So the maximum horizontal distance covered is range, the maximum vertical distance covered that is what you call as height. So if I may measure it from this point, at the most the part, this, this ball has reached point O. Now this vertical distance, maximum vertical distance that is covered, this is what is height. See the ball has, at the most it has gone, it has reached point O. It has not gone beyond O, above O. So this dist vertical distance between this point O and this ground level, this maximum vertical distance, this is what you call as a height. Yeah, so it is nothing but, if I may write it, instead of maximum vertical distance maximum vertical distance covered by the projectile I repeat if, uh, if I may just show you this uh, previous definition uh, the maximum horizontal distance covered is what we are called as range and here you have what is height, it is the maximum vertical distance that is covered by the earth. So that's the basic difference. The maximum horizontal distance and maximum vertical distance. That's all. Yeah. So just, uh, yeah, if, uh, rather than just uh, twisting the pages, I may draw that diagram again here. This is your point A from which the ball is uh, launched into air. It has reached a particular point O and from O it has come down like this and it has hit this point B. So this A to B, this is the maximum horizontal distance, that is what we call as range and this is the maximum vertical distance, that is what we call as height. And uh, as we have already explained, the angle of projection means it is the angle made by the line of travel 
with this horizontal that is what you call as this angular projection theta yeah now the last term that uh, that is of our importance uh, the last parameter that we need to understand here that is the time of flight uh, yeah time of flight let me just explain it to you first uh, before going uh, to some other uh, terminologies so time of flight it is indicated see height is indicated by h time of flight is indicated by letter small t it is the time for which it is the time for which the object is in projectile motion it is the time for which the object is in projectile motion so in in short it is the time for which that object is in air see uh, this football if uh, see it started its motion from point a initially it is at rest at point a the player came and kicked it it went into the air reached this highest point o and from o it dipped 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 dipped, dipped and finally it reached this point b it hit the ground at point b so during its journey from a to b at a it is on ground at b it is on ground but during this journey from a to b it is in air right so the time for which see the moment it left ground and the, you have to start counting the time of flight the time for which it is in air see it the moment it left ground it went into air it moved like this 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 and finally it reached this point b so this time for which it is in air the time for which that object is in air that is what you call as time of flight right so yeah the different uh, equations will write so just in short in a nutshell if i may put it what is range what is height what is time of flight and what is that uh, angle of projection in, the, in terms of this diagram see the I, i'll repeat i kick the ball from here the ball went into air now this is the line of travel this is the line of travel of the ball and this is the horizontal so the angle made by this line of travel with this horizontal this is what is called as angle of projection theta now the ball went into air it moved like this it reached this highest point o and from o it dipped 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 it came down 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 and finally reached this point o so this maximum horizontal distance as i already explained to you range and this range and height are distances so this horizontal distance maximum horizontal distance see uh, starting point is a and end the motion is ending at point b so this maximum horizontal distance is range and the maximum vertical distance this one this is the last this is the highest point to which that ball can go and this is ground so the maximum vertical distance that is covered by the object that is height the maximum horizontal distance that is covered is what is range and the time what is time of flight the time for which it is in air the moment you kick the ball it left ground it 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 moved in air it reached this particular point o which is the highest point and from o onwards it dipped 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 and finally hit this point p so during its motion from a to b see after leaving a and before reaching b i repeat after leaving a and before reaching b this ball is entirely in air and this time for which it is in air that is what is time of flight now the, uh, one concept uh, that uh, i should explain you what is called as trajectory trajectory is nothing but the path along which the object moves the object moves in projectile motion Uh, see, uh, in order to explain this particular concept, uh, I would like to give you a slightly different example: the motion of cricket ball in air. Yeah, motion of cricket ball. Uh, 
suppose uh, you have two bolus. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I'm just drawing some rough sketches here, and uh, just uh, uh, I'll try to explain what is trajectory. And here you have a batsman. This is one bowler, and uh, say, uh, if I may put it this way, he's say six feet high, and his hand is outstretched, and here he has the ball in his hand, and here is the batsman. Okay, now suppose his height is six from this point to this point. This is ground. This is of course ground, and from here to here this is six feet this is six feet and this is say you may what you can say say maybe one feet or whatever yeah so six plus one seven feet he's delivering the ball he has his eye he has his hands outstretched and he's delivering the ball so the distance of this point of delivery from ground is roughly what if we assume this as one feet this will be total seven feet right so the point from which he is delivering the ball is at distance of 7 feet from ground. So naturally, it will be like this. He will come this. He will reach the back. Now this bowler, suppose if, if I may call this as A and this bowler as say B, he is say what 5 feet high. And suppose he has his hand outstretched and this is say what? Half feet, uh, you may say, yeah, this is suppose this is half feet, suppose. So he has the ball at this point, he has the ball in his hand at this point, and the distance of this point, vertical distance of this point from this ground is what? It is what? Five and a half feet, yeah. So he'll deliver the ball from here and it will reach this path. Okay. Now the path along, you see, the bowler A delivered the ball from six plus one, seven feet height bowler b delivered the ball from five and a half feet now both the balls reach this batsman uh, fine the same batsman right now the path in which this ball from bowler a reached this batsman and the path along which this ball from bowler b reached the batsman they are totally different so these paths are different so i'll say that this is the trajectory for bowler A and this is the trajectory for bowler B. So what is trajectory? Trajectory is the path along which the object moves in air. The moment the ball is released from the bowler's hand, it is in air and it will, it will go like this and it will reach the batsman. Right. So, I mean, uh, after leaving the bowler's hand and before reaching the batsman, the ball is in air. So this path along which that object moves, that ball moves, is what is trajectory. So naturally, uh, if I may compare these two, right, I'll say that bowler A has a flighter trajectory, has a flighter trajectory, and bowler B as a flatter trajectory. What do you mean by that? Flatter and flatter, these are the words which are used in the context of height, the height from which the balls are delivered. Clearly, this bowler A is delivering from a greater height, so we'll say that he's having a flight, that this ball is having the flatter trajectory, it is delivered from a more a greater height. So naturally, we'll say that it has a flighter trajectory, and this is delivered from a lesser height, relatively lesser height. We'll say that this has a flatter trajectory. So, the trajectory is nothing but the path along which that object moves, right? So it, it's as simple as that. Yeah. Suppose if I may, uh, yeah, that means uh, if if I may elaborate more on this now here here is the batsman now in which case uh, the batsman is likely to face more trouble clearly when the ball is given more flight the ball is flighter he will face more problems than when he has to face a flatter trajectory the reason is now uh, if I may 
put a question to you. Uh, the batsman will face greater difficulty in facing which bowler? Bowler A or bowler B? The answer has to be bowler A. Now what is the reason? The reason is simple. Here the bowler A is delivering from a height of say 7 feet. Bowler B is delivering from 5.5 feet. Clearly as the bowler A is delivering from a greater height, the ball will remain in air for a greater period of time. I mean the ball will take greater time to reach the batsman whereas in case of bowler B the ball will take lesser time to reach the batsman. So the batsman suppose if, if, if as an example if say if I may put it this way the bowler A uh, the ball delivered by A or you, or you may put it this way, time of flight, time of flight in case of A and time of flight in case of B. So time of flight in case of A say 15 seconds and time of uh, flight in case of B say 9 seconds. Clearly uh, what it indicates is that time that the, uh, I mean uh, the ball delivered by bowler A reaches this batsman after 15 seconds and the ball delivered by B which is the batsman in 9 seconds. So this is a greater period of time the batsman has to search the ball for 15 seconds or he has to wait for the ball for 15 seconds and here he has to wait for a lesser time which is say 9 seconds. And the more the time for which the ball remains in air he has to uh, he has to change his vision up and down here the time is more so clearly he has to look up down up down and in that case uh, or in that process there is every chance that he will commit mistake the more the time for which the ball remains in air the more adjustments the batsman has to make with his vision he has to uh, he has to uh, move his eyes up then he has to move his uh, uh, eyes down and during this process he is continuously uh, adjusting his bat also so the more the time for which the ball is in air the more the time of flight, there is every chance that uh, there will be some mistake in hand-eye coordination and there is every chance that he will commit mistakes. So the flight trajectory is always um, uh, a tougher, uh, tougher, tougher prospect for the batsman to face rather than a flatter trajectory. So in short, trajectory is the path along which the object moves in air. So here you have, uh, I repeat, the bowler is delivering, bowler A is delivering from 